Welcome to BP Online. We're a church that meets in North Central Calgary with people from all over the world, from all different walks of life, and we're excited you're joining us today. We hope that as you watch online, you're encouraged and challenged in your faith, and most of all, that you encounter Jesus. If you're checking us out for the first time, welcome. You're in the right place at the right time. Whether you're watching us at home or on the go, we hope you'll be impacted by the service today. Thanks for joining us. We will be starting in just a few moments. All right, well, welcome to church, everybody. If you're joining us online, a welcome to church this weekend. If you're in the building, I invite you to stand and let's worship the Lord together. Here we go.
Well, welcome to church this weekend. God has done great things. Amen? And I expect God to do great things tonight, this weekend, as we worship together. Whatever it is you came in with on your heart, my prayer for you is that when you leave this place, God has done something amazing, transformational in your life for whatever it is that you need. This weekend, we have a one of our own from in our church speaking this weekend, one of our... Uh, persons that serves on our missions task force. Alfonso is going to be speaking. He's been a pastor. He's been a missionary. And uh, he's been part of our church now for quite a few years. And I'm looking forward to him dealing with Acts chapter 3. Uh, and as we see what the Lord has in store for us. But I'm going to pray. And let's take this time as we worship. We're going to do communion for you that are watching online. Make sure you grab something and uh, get it ready for communion for this weekend. Grab a cracker and some juice or something that you have at home. And just get ready. We'll do communion in a few songs. And uh, just invite Holy Spirit into your home as we invite Holy Spirit into this place. So, Father, we thank you for this opportunity we have to celebrate you and the great things that you've done in our lives, the great things that you're doing through our lives. I pray, Holy Spirit, whether it's in this building or it's in homes this weekend, Father, that there's a transformational movement in our lives. God, where you renew us, you transform us, and you move us into the direction that you desire us to be. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. We welcome you to speak loudly into our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. As we sing together, let's worship together and welcome Holy Spirit.
when you feel the room. You're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. You may be seated while we take communion. I'm going to start a little bit differently. I'm going to begin by reading the first part of our scripture verse that we normally read uh, before communion. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it. Now, each of us here has had moments where scripture really comes alive. We've had those moments where all of a sudden a light bulb goes on and you go, ooh, I get it. I've heard these verses my whole life. I grew up in church, kind of like Mark. Uh, my father's a minister. I heard th those verses come out of his mouth many, many times over my life. Same thing with my grandfather. The Sunday following my father's funeral, I was asked by our church to read those four verses. As I read verse 23, I was struck with this amazing realization that in that moment, what my father had received was now passed to me. Leading in communion has now become a responsibility as a father, as a son, and as a man of God. Our family looks to me to carry on that baton until either I'm called home or I get to pass it on to the next generation. Each person here tonight participating in the Lord's Supper is tasked with the same thing, to pass on what you've received. So this weekend, as we take and partake in communion in these emblems, remember that you don't do this alone. Look to your right, look to your left. These are the people that you do life with and these are the people that you're passing things on to. So as I see families sitting together, remember that you're not just doing this in a vacuum, you're not just doing this by yourself, but you're doing this as an act of worship, but in front of your family, you're an example. Before we take these emblems, let's take a moment to reflect and take a moment to reflect on the ones that pass this on to you. Because somebody, you're here tonight, not because you just felt like being here, but because somebody placed that into your life. So let's take a moment and just reflect on that. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for the Lord's Supper, and we thank you for this act of remembrance. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take the bread together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's take the cup. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the shed blood on the cross. We thank you for your broken body. And Lord, we also thank you for the ability to pass this on to the next generation, that each generation in the faith would come to the Lord's table, not alone, but as part of a long string going all the way back to you. Be with us in the rest of this service, we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing again.
You know, it's because of what communion symbolizes that it is possible for the Holy Spirit to fall afresh on us. That Jesus has opened up heaven by his death on the cross and him taking our sin upon himself and, and nailing it there to the cross. He has opened up all that heaven has for us that the Spirit of God could fall fresh in our lives today. That he can transform us, he can renew us, and he can give us life. And for generations, as John mentioned, for generations, that story, that account, that narrative, that truth has been passed on from generations to generations. So that today we can sing that song with a confidence of Holy Spirit, fall afresh in my life. Holy Spirit, renew me. Holy Spirit, transform me. So Father, we say that right now. Holy Spirit, come. Renew me, transform me. Holy Spirit, change me. We thank you, Father, that you have opened up of heaven, that your presence no longer dwells outside of your creation, but your presence dwells inside of us, and that your presence transforms us into your likeness so that the world can see you a little clearer through our lives so father today we thank you that you've opened heaven and that you've made it possible for your presence to be in our lives god whatever it is that we need right now whatever it is that we're facing whatever it is that we're going through we know the power of your presence changes everything and so father in jesus name I just speak healing into bodies. Father, I speak deliverance. I speak freedom. I speak transformation because of your presence in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Well, it's great to see you out this weekend to worship together. Why don't you turn and wave to somebody and say hi. Smile with your eyes. In a couple weeks, hopefully, you'll be able to smile with your teeth. But uh, smile with your eyes and say hi to everybody. We have uh, some announcements that are coming up. Our junior highs are dismissed out to the junior high class. Uh, so you can head on out to the gym and just watch the screen for our announcements. Well, welcome to BP Church. Whether you're watching online or in person, welcome. And if you are in the building, we would love to connect with you. There's a little QR code in the seat back in front of you. We ask you to just take your phones out, scan it. Tell us as much information about you as you want to give to us. And then go to the Take Three booth out at the uh, foyer at the end of the service. And we're going to put a little gift in your hands, and answer any of your questions, and welcome you. And if you have come prepared to give, because our goal here at BP Church is to reach 1% of North Calgary, then we have our giving boxes at the back, our giving station in the foyer, and bpchurch.ca slash give online. And if there are any parents with us here in the sanctuary, and you do have little ones with you, and they're not quite happy here, we do have a nursery for them where they can play. You can still watch the service, and you won't miss a thing. So if you're new with us and you don't know about it, now you do. Hey, BP Church, announcements are coming half from down in Phoenix, Arizona this week. Uh, we will be back, of course, on Sunday, but we're here for a conference at Dream City Church. Enjoying it, loving it, getting refreshed. It's been awesome. We have a few things coming up at our church that I want you to remember. We have our annual general meeting, our AGM, on February the 27th at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. We'll be putting in some new board members and talking about some of the business of the church and where we've been and where we're going and what God has in store for us. So I encourage you to plan on being there. Well, with the COVID restrictions changing, Norell and I are doing an announcement. <laughs> yeah, look at how close that is, everybody. We want you to be aware of a new class that we're going to be running at the church. It's all about unity and living in unity and walking in unity and breaking off personal biases that separate us and it's about racial unity yeah. it's about the church really leading the way in society of what god intends us to be and so Norrell, when does this start for us yeah this and this course actually starts on february the 24th um at uh, seven o'clock and, and we are looking for people to register uh online so they can go to the event and then register there and that would give us all give them an opportunity to get into the so if you'd like to be part of this class, we encourage you, put time aside for this. How many weeks is it? It's 10 weeks. 10 weeks long, it'll benefit your life and help you to lead others in unity. Awesome. 
Hey parents, a full bit here. I am so glad that Youth is back on again this Friday night and we're starting a new series and it's all about how to do relationships. We're gonna be going through singleness, we're gonna be going through being a couple, and we're gonna end at being married. So, parents, you don't want your students to miss that. It's gonna be amazing. And if you're wondering, oh, I don't know, my students are in relationships. They probably are, just kidding, I don't know that, but you, they should come and find out how to do it well this Friday night. Lastly, but not the least, we are going on a retreat. First weekend in March. It's going to be amazing from March 4 to March 6, Friday night, leaving on Friday afternoon, and then coming back on Sunday afternoon. It's going to be phenomenal, and the price is only $175. It's going to be horseback riding. We have an amazing guest speaker. We have just amazing activities planned for your students. So, you want to register? Tell them to go to bpu.ca, and then you can register. Um, online for each and every one of your students. So can't wait to see you this Friday and hopefully I'll see your names on our registration sheet for the retreat. And another thing we want you to be aware of is that our true spirituality R12, Romans 12 course is happening next Wednesday. We want you to be involved. bpchurch.ca slash events is where you can register. We're going over once again the five characteristics of a disciple. Some people will make you mad at work and make you just want to lose your mind. How do you overcome evil with good? There are times in your life where you just are living for self and you are not fully submitted to God. And so this course will go over that and so much more on how you can live fully free and be a true follower of Jesus Christ. So I do encourage you, go to bpchurch.ca slash events and register today. Well, church, those are all the announcements that we have for this week. We are continuing our series in the book of Acts. And today we have a guest speaker. And so to introduce our guest speaker, would you put your hands together and welcome Pastor Come on. As you can see, we were out of country for a little bit, and and uh, now back again. You could tell that Afope was doing announcements from Canada because he had a mask on, and we were doing announcements from the U.S. because we didn't have one on, I guess. Uh, I'll talk more about that next week, but I'll, t- I'll talk about our, our conference next week and everything that happened there. But this weekend, we have the privilege of having Alfonso. Alfonso and Ruth and their family, their boys and their daughter have been attending our church now for a number of years. And it's been an awesome privilege to get to know Alfonso and to spend time with them, have lunches together and talk about ministry and his passion for ministry. He's been a missionary. He's been a pastor. He's been uh, grew up in uh, Guatemala and uh, planted a church in Guatemala and Colombia and then has also uh, ministered and, and did missions work over in Eastern Europe. And so I'm excited for him to deal with part of the early church and seeing the early church begin to come alive and begin to grow and uh, dealing with Acts chapter 3. So why don't you welcome Alfonso to come as he shares tonight what the Lord has laid on his heart. Thank you, Pastor Mark. You're a blessing. Thank you. Good evening, church. Let me tell you, this would be a lot more easier if it was in Spanish. But the good Lord and the Holy Spirit is going to anoint us tonight, so we're good. So, hallelujah. It's a privilege to be here with uh, my home church. And so, for starters, how many would uh, say thank you to the Lord because we don't have to pre-register anymore? Amen. Amen. So a big thank you to Pastor Norell and his ministry for all the good work that they have done and uh, how they have organized all that and just make it smooth, right? So I'm going to pray one more time for my own sake. <laughs> so Father, in the name of Jesus, my Lord, Father, I pray to you that you bring the blessing and the anointing over your people tonight and over myself as well, Father. Father, Lord, I pray you prosper them, you heal them, and you empower them with your mighty spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to worship you tonight and partake of your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. And so, church, tonight I'm going to be speaking about the fire of the Holy Spirit. So I want you to get ready, and I want you to elbow your partner who's sitting beside you, and tell them this message is for you and for me. Also, how many of you are blessed that um, the church got the revelation of this series on the fire of the Holy Spirit? Let me tell you. Amen. Right? Very good. Something so refreshing and so rewarding 
that we need as Christians. And so today, let's continue seeking and receiving that fire from the Lord. Let me begin, let me begin this evening by reading to you what the main topic is going to be tonight. If you look at uh, the next slide, it says in there, because the kingdom of God, it's not only words, but power. It says in 1 Corinthians 4.20. And here we see a letter sent to Corinthians that Paul writes to them. And he is talking about the kingdom not being just words, but power. And power from whom? From the Holy Spirit. Paul declares that this is power, anointing, fire. That fire that takes the fear away, that fire that encourages us to take the leap of faith and to engage with God in his plan. Amen? And so Paul says that all talk, though, is meaningless without the legitimate power of God behind it. What do we mean by this? In James 2.26, he says, As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deed is dead. Listen, Paul does not want the Corinthians to forget that he did not just introduce them to big ideas that can be captured and manipulated with words. He's saying, yes, learn, yes, Get filled with the word, but then seek the power of the Lord to engage in his spirit and put your faith in action. God is available only through faith in Christ and the Holy Spirit, he tells them. Do not dwell only on words because the words do not have power unless the Holy Spirit anoints you to fire up and take that leap of faith to work for the Lord. It says not just words, but power. As Pastor Mark said, during the past 12 years or so with my family, we served as global missionaries in 15 different nations. And in here, we had the privilege of witnessing firsthand the work of the Lord and the anointing of the Holy Spirit in people. You know, it was just amazing to see average men and women being empowered by the Lord to do the miracles and to do the what the human limitation doesn't allow us to do. During this journey, I personally, as a minister, witnessed amazing things. I saw average people empowered. I saw average people who engaged into lifting up their hands and receiving the anointing of the Holy Spirit like we just did today. And they were empowered to pray for the sick, to cast out those who needed to be cast out, to tumble down those strongholds of the enemy, and to bring life to people with the word of the Lord. I met people who prayed and the enemy's strongholds tumbled. I saw people who spoke the truth and people cried their eyes out and they believed and they surrendered themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. I saw thousands coming to the Lord and I saw one and one coming to the Lord led by people just like you or like me. It was just an amazing journey. At one time in Africa, I saw thousands coming to the Lord just by a bold man who had received the fire of the Lord. And he stood at the front and he preached the word with his heart out. And then the people just whipped and they just came to the Lord in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. That's what the fire of the Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord can do. This journey also took me to see firsthand the transformation of people. Remember when we were transformed by the Lord and the Holy Spirit? That miracle by itself, I saw repeatedly. I saw murderers who had become pastors. I saw tax collectors, collectors who were now evangelists and they were preaching the word of the Lord. I saw rehab drug addicts who were doing the impossible. They were raising money to feed the poor and they were boldly speaking about Christ on the streets and with their families. And they had been transformed and just sharing their heart out with the Lord and for the Lord. This amazing time walking alongside Christ took me to meet, took me to meet people who decided to go one step further into their Christianity and who changed their words for power. Amen? 
And so now you will understand why every time I am invited to share about the Holy Spirit, I begin with this. Church, I believe we all need fresh word from the Lord tonight. I believe there is more in the kingdom of God than just words or being a fireless Christian. Because the kingdom of God is not only words, but it is power, so says the Lord. And so with this, let me share with you a short story. A few years back, one day I was overwhelmed and frustrated because the strongholds the enemy had taken around me. You know, there was rampage, disease, there were earthquakes, there were um, famines, there were plagues, there, were, there was poverty, there was hunger, there was death, there, was, there were floods, an endless list of hurt and sorrow. And I just said to the Lord, Father, what's going on? You know, I know you are almighty and I, I love you for that and I know that you're all powerful. So why, do you do any, why don't you do something about this? In a big silence, right? In a big silence followed. And more silence followed. And then he answered to me. And he spoke to my heart and he said, Alfonso, but I have. I sent you. I couldn't talk. I had it coming. I couldn't talk because I knew I was guilty as charged. I could almost see God saying, you asked for it. And so church, many times we forget how much the Lord has empowered us to make a difference in this world. Many times we forget that the Lord is alongside us, in front of us, behind us, above us and under us to protect us and to push us to do his work. We just have to raise up our hands and say, here I am. Most time we forget. And that's sad. Many times we have no idea of our potential for Christ. Of course, not only until, until one day Pastor Mark decides to have a series on the Holy Spirit and you find yourselves here and then, boom, the revelation Wow, so do you mean I can do that? Do you mean I can be empowered to do that? Do you mean I can catch that fire and then just do it for the Lord? Of course we can. Let's read together this opening scripture that I have for us tonight. In the third chapter of the book of Acts, the Bible speaks to us about this. It says, One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth, was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg for those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Later on in the chapter 3, we also see, that we so, we also see them going boldly and preaching about God and his son. Remember, church, but the kingdom of God, it's not only words, but power. Scripture tells us that after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit came over the apostles in Acts chapter 2. Now in chapter 3, we see Peter and John exercising that powerful gift they had received from heaven. In this case, Peter was on fire. He was just on fire. As he had been anointed, the word says, the man had not only been redeemed and justified, but now he, was also, he had also received the fire of the Spirit of God from above. And he was on fire. Did you hear? He was literally on fire. He was performing miracles. He was boldly speaking about the Lord to the people who had killed Jesus. And he wasn't afraid anymore. Like we are when we need to share with somebody the gospel of Jesus Christ and the gospel of salvation. But he was not fearful anymore. Can somebody please say amen? amen. 
It was just not words anymore, but it was power. It was fire from above. It was fire from the Holy Spirit that had anointed them and filled them. And now they had just surrendered to that power. In the second chapter of the book of Acts, if you like, if you see the way I saw it, we're giving a description of the difference between the effects of being fireless and being on fire with his spirit. And how that empowerment changed the apostles forever. Quote, and quote, forever. What Jesus had prophesied, it had come to pass. The anointing of the Holy Spirit had come over them. He had taken them. He had filled them. And now they were men who were ready like we are. Their faith came alive. And they were ignited by the Holy Spirit. Now, these men had finally been transformed. Now, as you remember, they had not always been like that or men on fire. Their before was very different than their now. In their before, they were fearful men. Yes, men of faith, men of God. But the Bible tells us that although they were faithful disciples, their lives had not spiritual traction. No spiritual traction. They were just floating in there. Just words, right? Just words. No action. No power. But in their now, as they were filled with the Spirit of God, they sure had changed. They had now received the power of God to do the supernatural. And this drove them to go beyond their human limits. Listen, I know it's scary when Pastor Mark says, you got to talk to somebody. Let the Holy Spirit fill you up. You got to read your scriptures and go share with your friends. Go share on the street. I know that's scary. But it's not with your human power. It's with his power. Peter was a good example of this. In chapter 3, we read that the fire had turned him into a mountain mover. An effective witness. The guy who had denied Jesus, the irate man who was violent, now had been transformed and empowered. He was now speaking to the mountain, and you know what? The mountain was moving away. His fears were gone. That is what the fire of God did in him and can also do in us. Now, what Peter did in chapter 3, the performing of miracles and the sharing of Christ with boldness, in front of those who had killed Jesus, only the empowerment of the Holy Spirit could have done it. Nobody else. That is the difference with being fireless and being on fire for God. And so today I think it's fair that we ask ourselves this question. You ready for this? Are we on fire for him or are we fireless? Elbow your neighbor and tell your neighbor, he's asking you. And so what happens when we're not on fire for him, dear church? First, I believe that we are spiritually weak. And that makes us an easy prey to attacks from the enemy. Do you know why? Because it is your strength that you're using and not the strength of the mighty. Amen. Second, we're an easy prey to oppression. And that makes us very vulnerable to sin. Church, if we want to be a body that conquers this city, as I heard we say, we need to be a church on fire for God. And I think you agree. Listen to one, what John Wesley, the theologian, once said. He said, if I had 300 men who feared nothing but God, hated nothing but sin, and were determined to know nothing about men but Jesus Christ and him crucified only, I would set the entire world on fire. And so today, let me speak to you about what it means to be on fire for God. And for, God, for that, we're going to go to the book of Judges, chapters 15. We're going to read together verses 1 through 6. God is talking to us here. 
Let's start. It says, later on, at the time of wheat harvest, Samson took a young goat and went to visit his wife. He said, I am going to my wife's room, but her father would not let him go in. I was so sure you hated her, he said, that I gave her to your companion. Isn't her younger sister more attractive? Take her instead. And Samson said to them, this time I have a right to get even with the Philistines. I will really harm them. So he went out and caught 300 foxes and tied them tail to tail in pairs. He then fastened a torch to every pair of tails, lit the torches, and let those foxes loose in the standing grain of the Philistines. He burned up the stalk and standing grain together with the vineyards and olive groves. When the Philistines asked, who did this? They were told, Samson, the team night son-in-law, because his wife was giving to his companion. Aha. Uh-huh. You see how much damage we can do to the enemy's kingdom when we're set on fire in, in his spirit and we're loose in the kingdom of the, the enemy? In the book of Judges, Samson burns the crops of the Philistines. We read that after how he is rudely intended, he is rudely rejected by the father of his intended bride, Samson looks uh, to cause harm and have revenge to the Philistines. The scripture tells us that he catches 300 foxes, not jackals, and fastens their tails together and ties torches to them and sets them on fire. Samson then turns foxes loose in the grain vineyards and olive orchards of the Philistines to cause as much severe damage as he can. So, church, what is the significance of this act? I think it's deep, very deep. Imagine, it was springtime and the wheat crops were beginning to be harvested. The text refers as grain stalks to the olive orchards and the vineyards that contain all the grains from the Philistines. All their possessions, all their food. The economy was based on what they had. So for Samson to burn these grain stocks, it was an economic disaster for the Philistine people, of course. Now, if you remember, not only their food, but they were also trying to regain economic and military power after they had had a devastating war with Egypt. And so torches torches are attached to the fox's tails, which are in turn tied together and set on fire. And then the foxes are led loose in the enemy's field, causing as much damage to his crops. So, you may ask, what do foxes represent for us in this story? Well, in my interpretation, the foxes are symbolic of the old man in their sinful nature, who are caught and apprehended by the Holy Spirit, being pulled out of their dens of iniquity and having their nature changed by the fire of God. That's me. That's you. And then they're used to infiltrate the enemy's kingdom and cause as much damage as possible. This is what Peter did in chapter 3. He went out into the enemy's fields And began doing miracles and witnessing. And doing as much damage he could do to the enemy's fields and to the enemy's kingdom with his faith. With his witnessing. With his boldness for the Lord. And so today, church, I say we need fire from the Lord. We need fire for our church. I think one of the greatest strategies nowadays is that there are so many fireless foxes. And so many fireless churches. Listen, many foxes have been caught, but have failed to catch the fire of the Lord. The sad story is this. That many churches, many foxes, at one time were on fire. Before this series, I was fireless. 
And just recently, I started praying in again. Because we need to be reminded. When people are on fire for the Lord, they infiltrate the enemy's fields and steal souls for his glory. One at a time. Or a whole bunch at a time. Many Christians today live sad, bored, and without purpose. And that's because we have neglected to lift up our hands and say, Lord, give me that fire. Give me that blessing, Lord. Give me that anointing that the apostles showed in chapter 3, Father. And they boldly went to witness about your glory, Lord. Oh, what a tragedy it is to have at one time lived with the fire. And not have it anymore. Do you remember? One time we prayed with fire. We witnessed with fire. We sang with fire. We preached with fire. We testified with fire. Everything was on fire. And do you know why? Because the church had decided to fall on his face and seek the anointing of the Lord. And you know what happened? The anointing came. And we have experienced that one time, twice, three times in Toronto, in Florida, in Argentina, in Africa, everywhere where they seek it, where they ask for it, the fire of the Holy Spirit falls and anoints them and fills them. So what about the fire, you might ask? Well, it comes from heaven. And it's here to fill us, bless us uses us, but it also comes here to destroy the enemy's strongholds, and we should know that. Last weekend, Pastor Mark said, it is like during the day of Pentecost. The Bible says that the apostles waited, and they prayed, and they waited, and they prayed, and they waited, and they prayed one day, two days, three, four, five, ten days. And you know what? And suddenly, the fire fell and cloven tongues like fire descended upon each of them and they were all filled with the glory of the spirit of God and after this they were ignited hallelujah they were ignited you know I was in Africa a few years back and it just smashed me the fire that I saw there the joy that I saw there it was just amazing and the Bible tells us in chapter 3 and chapter 2 of the book of Acts that this resulted, this anointed resulted in 3,000 conversions and then 5,000 conversions. No more fear to talk about the Lord because it was no more just about words. It was about power. Church, I want to remind you tonight that God is still in the throne. And it's the same God that threw and spilled his fire, his loving fire, over all those people the same way he can still do it tonight. And yet, God understands we have fireless foxes. The Philistines would have said the same thing the devil says today. Foxes and churches with no fire? Hey, no problem. Let them go to church. They mean no harm in there. Jesus said to them, don't go anywhere till you get the fire. Wait in Jerusalem until the fire comes. Then run with it. But run with it. Marathon with it. And you know what? The fire came. And they went to take the land for God. Look at the effect of fire. And look at what happened in this church two weekends ago. missionary kid. I got so many opportunities to see my mom and dad just on fire for the Lord and just being in the spirit inside and outside of the church. One of the things that I remember most vividly is listening to them speak in tongues. I remember thinking, oh, my mom and dad sound so funny right now, but behind that, there was such authority, such assertiveness behind the things that they said, almost a conviction behind this funny language. When I look back at that now, I know 
that there was conviction behind those words. I know that we have the authority Jesus has given to us. These words were not just words, they were fire. I felt that same fire on the weekend when Pastor John blessed us with his word. I knew that he was anointed, that the Spirit was among us, his presence was dwelling. Pastor John acted as a catalyst of the Holy Spirit, of the fire that many of us felt that night. While in prayer, I felt the Spirit take hold of me, wash over me, and I found myself speaking in tongues. It was similar to that of my parents, but so unique and beautiful in its own way. It felt liberating, it felt powerful, it felt like fire. What a privilege to connect with our amazing Father like that. After feeling the Spirit, I could only ask, what do I do? How can I serve? How do I use this fire to further the kingdom of God? And we ask the same things. How do you want to use me, God? Trust me. I cried, I don't know. How many times after I heard that? I believe we need fresh word today about the fire. Are you ready to receive the power of the Lord, that beautiful anointing from his spirit? I know we haven't finished yet, but I want to pray tonight for you. Father, I know you have special circumstance for your people tonight. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus, my Lord, that you pour your spirit over them and bring them to joy and fire to go beyond their limits, Father. Lord, I pray that you know their name. I know, Father, that you know their heart. And so, Father, I ask you, my Lord, that in the name of Jesus, that you pour your spirit over them, Father, in the name of Jesus, my Lord. Father, let your spirit blow like you did in the day, on the day of Pentecost over this church and over my brothers and sisters, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. Church, I want to be a problem for the devil. I want him to see his fields on fire behind me because of my work for the Lord. I want to make a difference in this world. I don't know about you, but I want to leave a mark on my generation that somebody with the fire of God came by and did something for the Lord. Can somebody please say amen? So finally, let's look at three implications in the story of Samson of what we should do to get on fire like Peter did. Number one, there is nowhere to hide or run from God. Number two, we need to go back to basics. And number three, we need to do our part in the kingdom of God. So if we look at number one, there is no way to run and hide from God. And Samson says that the foxes were caught God will catch up to each of us like he did with Jonah, Paul, and Isaiah. Remember, Jonah, he hid from God. God found him, restored his heart, and then used him as his witness. And with Paul, Paul, the same thing. Paul persecuted Christians, but God found him, caught up to him, changed his heart, reshaped his heart, and then used him for his glory, the same as he did with Isaiah. Church, let us go into the enemy's fields tonight and from here on, and let others understand they need to be on fire for God to reach the unreached. Again, Samson got the foxes together. And tied them down by their tails in pairs and ignited a torch to their tails to burn the enemy's fields. So the Lord wants us to be a united church in the love of Christ Jesus Christ, empowered by his spirit, accepting to collect the harvest in the fields. In Matthew 24, 14 says, tell them that the gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. But tell them that. And then lead them to pray for the end to come. Number two, we have to get back on track. You know, it just hit my heart when we were singing that praise and worship song where Mark said, let the Holy Spirit fill you up again. Is your tank empty? The foxes were ignited, 
The Holy Spirit needs to fill our hearts again. But we need to go back to basics. We need to fall in love with Jesus again. Back to the first love. Do you remember? When we were just romanticizing with the name of Jesus. And you would be willing to serve, to give, to go, to bring, to clean, to do whatever it took to please him. That is the kind of first love I'm talking about. The only one who can transform us and remove that veil so we can become on fire for Jesus is the Spirit of God. John 15, 16 says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear, and bear fruit. I'm sorry. Fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Hallelujah. Number three, we need to do our part. The foxes were sent out. He didn't pamper the foxes and, oh, you're beautiful. And you know what? Here's your food and just stay there. He sent them out. As the foxes were released into the Philistines' fields, they ignited their fields and damaged their crops. And that church is God in us as a church. United in the spirit for the good of God's people. In Acts 1.8 it says, But you will receive power from the Holy Spirit. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria. And to the ends of the earth. Oh my goodness, I can now see clearly what Samson did. The foxes were loved. They were trained, led and then sent out to ignite the fields of the enemy. Pastor Mark, send them out. Send them out to preach. Send them out to preach on the street with their friends, to hand out coffee and tracts, to show mercy and compassion, and to love one another. Send them out. All Christians need to wake up and do their part in the kingdom. And the kingdom is an active kingdom that keeps expanding and expanding and expanding. We need to shake up the world for Christ until every knee bows and every tongue confess his glorious name. So let me close today. Oh, Lord. I believe we must ignite our churches to go intentionally to all people in the world. We need to have short-term, mid-term, and long-term missions in our church. God calls the Paul type people to leave the reached and scatter to get the unreached here and abroad. There are men and women in this church whom God is calling to do Paul type ministry tonight. Maybe not everybody, but some of you are. God is calling you to pack your bags and move here or overseas to spread the gospel among unreached people. Are you listening, church? Could he be calling you? Like he called my family 15 years ago. Listen, sending money to someone else to do the work of the Lord is great, and it's a blessing. But tonight, this is not just about sending money and letting others do the work that you were called to do. This is a direct calling to each of us personally. That is what it is to belong to the family of God. Are you ready to take the first step towards Jesus? Will you accept an opportunity to begin this journey with Jesus to receive the blessing of the Holy Spirit? The prayer we said before was for the anointing of the Lord to release the heavens upon us tonight. The prayer I'm going to do tonight is for you to surrender your life in wanting for the Lord to cleanse your sinful life. Will you choose to follow Jesus or will you reject him? Would you want him to forgive you of your sins and become part of God's family? 
Would this be your night? 35 years ago, on a night like this, I bowed my knee and I confessed that Jesus Christ was my Lord. And it's been a wonderful journey. And so tonight, I'm going to say a prayer. And let me get your heart ready. The prayer is going to be about you wanting to commit your life to Jesus Christ and wanting to be part of the family of God. Begin this journey with him and having your heart cleansed and your sins forgiven. That is what I'm going to do tonight. And so for those who are ready tonight, for those who are online tonight, let me just begin by saying this. God loves you. And God is not here to judge you. God is here to accept you, forgive you, and welcome you. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, my Lord, Father, I pray for those tonight who are ready to surrender their lives to the Lord. Father, I ask you that you go into everybody's heart and say this prayer to them. Lord, forgive me all my sins. Father, I know I have failed you. But, Father, I am so sorry. Lord, here I am. Take me as I am, but change me, Father. Fill me, Father. Transform me, my Lord. Father, I'm probably not worthy of you because all the bad that I have done. But they say that you're good, that you're a loving Father. Lord, tonight, I believe that your Son is Jesus Christ. That, Father, he died on the cross for me. And that's he's sitting at your right, Father. And so, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And so, if you repeated that prayer of salvation tonight, could you please raise your hand? Can I see hands, please? I just want to pray with you. I just want to share my heart with you as well. And online, if you surrender your life to the Lord tonight... There is a button you can click there so we can communicate with you and then follow up and love you and then present to you information about who this church is. So, Father, Lord, thank you, Lord. I bless you, my Lord. Anybody? Raise your hand, please. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Alfonso. I love the picture of Samson releasing those foxes out into the enemy's camp and destroying what the enemy had, the resources he had, to bring blessing to the nation of Israel, freedom to the nation of Israel. And in our lives, God releases us into our community, into Calgary, around this world, wherever we might be, to transform it with the fire of God in our lives. And for us not just to walk by somebody that's in need, just as Peter walked into the temple and saw the individual begging, he said, I don't have what you're asking for, but I got something better. And you've got something better than anything else that you could give. And that's the presence of God in your life. And so as we go out into our community this week, let's be like those foxes that carry the fire of God to destroy what Satan is doing to bring freedom into somebody else's life. I love a quote from Reinhard Bonnke. Reinhard Bonnke used to always say that his life was meant to plunder hell and populate heaven. And our life is meant to plunder hell, to plunder what Satan is doing around us and populate heaven. So let's stand this week as we go out into our community. Let's be about that. With the fire of God in our lives, His Holy Spirit working in our lives, with that confidence that we've got greater things than just silver or gold to give, that we literally have that presence of the Holy Spirit 
to give to people as we go into our community that will transform their life and give them a hope and give them a future. Let's sing whatever that is you got there, Mark. <laughs> it's the power of your presence that changes us, your glory all around us. And we're undone, you open up. Fall afresh on us. It's the power of your presence. It's the power of your presence that changes us, your of your Holy Spirit. We need the fire of your Spirit consuming us and empowering us so that we don't just speak words, but God, we bring that power of your presence with us everywhere that we go. So Holy Spirit, empower your church. God, to represent you in such a unique way in our society that truly we could walk by somebody that is in need and go past their physical need and meet their, their spiritual need right there through the power of your presence. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. So just in case you didn't know, the individual that was interviewed on the screen there, that was Sebastian, uh, Alfonso's son, can't tell with the mask on that one there. Uh, is that the first time you've got the gift of tongues in your life? You filled with the Spirit? It was just, that's awesome. Awesome. I don't think Pastor John, I don't, did anybody pray over you or just Holy Spirit just filled you? Just right there. Sweet. You know, it's all about just being open and allowing Holy Spirit just to pour into your life. That's what the disciples were doing in the upper room. Ten days of just being open. And then all of a sudden, Holy Spirit just poured out. Yes. That's right. You were supposed to do that. <laughs> Alfonso was pastored in Ukraine. So he. I was talking to him before the service. He said, oh, I was going to pray for Ukraine. I said, oh, great. Because I was going to pray for Ukraine. But I really do want us to stop and pray for Ukraine. We have families in our church have families in Ukraine, and uh, I know that there's some great concern there, and of course all of us uh, have concern for what's going on over there uh, right now, and uh, let's pray for peace, uh, let's pray for the Holy Spirit to get in there, and the demonic things that are happening in world leaders' minds would be broken off, and the peace of God would prevail. So Father, we thank you that even though we're here, and Ukraine is so far away, that prayer has no distance to it and no limitations to it. So, Father, we just bind the working of the enemy in world leaders right now. And, Father, where, where destruction would be imminent, Father, we know you can bring peace. And, Father, you can restore. Father, and I pray for those that right now are living in so much uncertainty, family members here and family members there. Father, I pray for your peace to guard their hearts and their minds. And, Father, I just pray that we will see a miracle, even this week, in world leaders, in Ukraine, Father, where no lives will be lost, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, God bless you. May the Lord use you this week to show the world who he is through your life. Our ministry team is going to be here at the front. If we can pray with you about anything, uh, we would love to do that. Wednesday night, we have a lot of activities going on at the church, and of course, youth on Friday, oh, and young adults on Tuesday. So God bless you. We'll see you at something this week.
Thanks for watching. If you'd like more information about our ministry, visit bpchurch.ca. Have a great week and live the ultimate life.